Hey there guys, Darren Griffiths here for Movie Market. I hope you're all keeping well. This is my latest video review from Glasgow Film Festival. I appreciate we're a little bit removed from the festival now, but the reviews will continue to keep rolling in. Um, the film that I'm going to tackle today is an absurd oddity of a story that's sort of become an infamous part of Scottish history back in the 1990s. It's called My Old School. It's directed by first time John O. MacLeod and also stars Alan Cumming. Um, John O. MacLeod, the director, happened to be one of the classmates of the guy in question here, who is at the forefront of this very bizarre narrative uh, that was weaved. Um, so My Old School tells the tale of Brandon Lee. Now, the name alone, Brandon Lee, you'd be thinking from back in the 90s, The Crow, uh, the actor who tragically died during uh, the production of that film. Um, now, Brandon Lee, 16 years old, almost a prodigal in how he enrolls into Beersden Academy in Glasgow back in the 90s. Um, his interests were considered quite highbrow uh, for the rest of the classmates. They didn't really connect with him much on a particular level. Um, but nonetheless, they were fascinated with his upbringing. And the story that's weaved is that his parents both died. His mother was an opera singer. He was originally from Canada. There, there, there were suggestions of plastic surgery going on. Um, and he ended up living with his grandmother. Um, but Brandon Lee, ultimately a guy called Brian McKinnon, wasn't all that he was cracked up to be. He was actually in his 30s and he was trying to find a way or carve out a path into medicine. And obviously he wasn't really getting anywhere. So he, this is, was his elaborate scheme to achieve it. Um, was his grandmother involved? <laughs> was she in on the act? Who knows? I mean, this is what the film tries to dissect and try and analyse. Um, but the classmates were just dumbfounded by how his backstory just completely unravelled. Now, MacLeod, his direction is very inventive, I have to say. The, the animation... Um, that feels distinctly of its time period. You're immediately thinking like when MTV were like really heavy on the animation, on these cartoons uh, that they really indulged in back in the 90s and there's hints hint of Nickelodeon in terms of the aesthetic. Um, and you think like Beavers and Butthead and Daria and all those kind of shows. Uh, and the way it achieves that is fantastic. Um, and with obviously McLeod being a former classmate, he didn't have to look too far in terms of getting other classmates to present their um, their thoughts and opinions. It feels very off the wall. Um, I can only compare it to say something like on Channel 4 when like First Dates or Gogglebox, that kind of feel to it. It's very irreverent in how all their um, quite contrasting opinions really because when you look at the surface of what Brandon Lee tried to do, it is quite creepy and a bit cringy, but there are certain aspects um, that shine through in terms of people's accounts that it's a little more heartwarming. I mean, there's obviously there is an element of deception towards it, but in terms of underneath all the facade, I you know like one particular guy sort of said that they helped him come out of his shell in terms of his engagements with, with Brandon, well, Brandon, Brian, whatever you want to go with. Um, but ultimately, particularly for the women, I mean, there is... There is a particular piece of footage that it's the only piece of footage that you see of Brandon presenting on the film, um, which I'll elaborate further on why that was the case in a moment. But they did a stage version of South Pacific, and there is a first kiss and some awkward um, warming up of the vocal cords going on. Um, but of course, that might have been a, a pupil, female pupil's first kiss, and to relive that must have been a bit traumatic once you know all the details of what Brandon set out. So there is that sort of the mental ramifications of it and then it's contrasted with another guy's sort of more heartwarming account and it, you know, it really just blur the lines in terrific fashion um, in how they're all presented because it is just so wacky, the story. Um, but there is some really great comedic timing because of the classmates sort of indulging in like in their own accounts of school and 
in a way, it's sort of a very inventive twist on the coming of age story um, through these characters and how um, Brandon sort of set out on this path all on his own, well, so to speak. But Alan Cumming, now, the, pr- the presentation of Brandon isn't in person, as I say. The video footage is the only snippet we get. Alan Cumming, he's left with the inenviable task of trying to present Brandon through an audio interview that he conducted. He didn't want to be on camera, but he did want to tell his side of the story um, through this film and agree to it. So Alan Cumming is very much the lip sync assassin. Um, given he has Club Cumming back in New York, I'm sure he would drag a few drag queens now <laughs> if they were not quite up to par in that in that respect. But it's a fantastic way of telling the story. And because, you know, playing a real life person, you know, it's all internalized. You really have to, in the way they inhabit all their emotions and their feelings. Here, it's completely different because you've got to rely on all the facial tics and trying to um, present it, project it out that way, um, whilst trying to get into the rhythm of how he speaks. Um, so the way Alan Cumming delivers it is just terrific and utterly compelling, uh, contrasting with the oddity of the story. Now, my old school, there is elements of repetition that creep in in the second, in the second half, um, in delivering certain aspects of the story. It is a little stretched at an hour 40, I will grant you, but I think you'll be completely enveloped with the story. Um, and thankfully, the distributor Dog Wolf have picked it up. Uh, I'm not sure about an actual UK release yet, but I really do think this will strike a chord with a lot of people in terms of in how it presents that you know secondary school, um, how we navigate through it, and all the the trials and the tribulations of it. Although this is a very elevated version um, that came through. Um, but on my old school I really do think will strike a chord with a lot of people and and just aside from all the coming of age stuff I think it's just a compelling story brilliantly told and very distinct and uh, props to John and McLeod for delivering a fantastic film that and in terms of the story I had literally no idea about it heading in um, and it completely gripped me from the word go so congrats so that is my review of my old school i sincerely hope you've enjoyed it um, movie market of course keep an eye on the website www.moviemarker.co.uk twitter at movie marker uh, like our facebook page movie marker and um, there is other sort of reviews coming of course i'm tackling bf5 flare as well at the moment um girl picture i watched last week which was the opening gala which was fantastic. I won't indulge too much just yet on my opinions, but there is a written review coming of that, and there will be other films from the festival that I'll be tackling uh, alongside a couple of leftovers from Glasgow Film Festival. Um, but that is a wrap for now. I've been Daryl Griffiths. Uh, take care, guys. Uh, lovely connecting with you all, as always, through this medium, and uh, I'll see you very soon. Take care, and bye for now. Much love. Bye-bye.